high great people of the teachings of Hanishi. Welcome to YSB Arena, the Eastern Regional Award winner. Today, we will learn the correct answers in the course Teaching in the Digital Age, TDA. And I will take you through the overview and the structure of the course. This is a common work of learning course. Which comes with the CPD point. So let's start with the overview. Now in the course, we have 12 modules to cover. And in each module, we, there is an assessment. So if you are able to go through the first module, you have an assessment based on that module. In all, we have 12 modules. And in module one, you have the skills needed in a digital age. And you have to answer five questions in this module. In module two, we have online learning and teaching methods. And in the assessment, you have five questions to answer. In module three, we have implementing online learning. And in module three, you have six questions to answer. In module four, we have understanding the learners. And in the assessment, you have six questions to answer. In module five, you have theories of learning. And at the end of this module, you have to answer five assessment questions. In module six, you have learner support. And at the end of this module, you have to answer five assessment questions. In module seven, we have choosing media. And at the end of this module, you have to answer four assessment questions. In module eight, we have assessment strategies. And at the end of this particular module, you have to answer six assessment questions. In module nine, we have quality teaching in a digital age. And at the end of this module, you have to answer four questions. In module 10, we have trends in open learning. And at the end of this module, you have to answer five questions. In module 11, we have massive open online courses, MOOCs. And at the end of the 11th module, you have to answer five assessment questions. And finally, in the last module, which is the 12th module, you have to take part in emerging technologies. And at the end of this Module, you have to answer five assessment questions. In all, you are going to answer 61 questions in the course of the training. If it were to be a type of assessment, we will say that it is a formative assessment because it is done during the course of study. So, you, in the formative assessment, you have 61 questions to answer and I will take you through all the correct answers in these 12 models. Also, the summative part of this particular course or the summative assessment is what will be used to give us your certificate or our certificate. So the summative one will be used for certification. And out of the 61 formative assessment, we are going to get 30 questions out of the 61 questions. So 61 formative assessment questions and 30 
summative assessment questions that will be taken from the formative questions. So let's do so that's the general overview. But let's look at this. In module one, the skills needed in a digital age, this is what you are going to do. You are going to watch a video on the skills needed in the digital age, the growing importance of skills development, the needs of a digital society, the skills needed in the digital age, humans wanted, developing skills, measuring skills, skills and learning outcomes, rethinking, teaching and learning, and activity that's reflective thinking, note taking and discussion. Then finally, we come to the end of the module. That's the key takeaways. So in the first module, that the skills needed in the digital age, there is a video on the COL platform which you have to watch. Then the second one, the growing importance of skills development. Then so you have to go through this document in the course of learning. The needs of a digital society. So these are the things we ought to learn. And based on this, questions will be asked. So what skills? So that the skills required um, in, in the digital age. So the communication skills, ability to learn independently, ethics and responsibility, teamwork and flexibility, thinking skills, digital skills, knowledge, manage, knowledge management, and others. Then humans wanted. Then in the developing skills, you have to go through this model, which forms part of the course. In the measuring skills, you have to go through this. This is just an overview. Skills and learning outcomes. So with thinking, teaching and learning, you have to go through some tutorials. Then finally, the reflective thinking. Then that's it. So the takeaways is simply means that the core point at the end of the lesson or our, our, uh, our objectives of this particular course. So knowledge involves two strongly interlinked but different components, such as content and skills. The use of digital technology needs to be integrated with and evaluated through the knowledge base of the subject area. Most instructors, at least in universities, are well trained in content and have a deep understanding of the subject areas in which they are teaching. Expertise in skill development, though, is important. The content and skills are tightly related and much attention needs to be given to skill development as well as a content acquisition to ensure that learners graduate with the necessary knowledge and skills for the digital age. So let's go to the answers. So in the in lesson one or in module one, you have skills needed in the digital age. And these are the questions. Question one, according to Tony Bates, which of the following skills is the most important one in the 21st century knowledge society? So you watch a video in the first module. So based on that video, you are required to answer question on that. So that's the video. You are required to watch a video. And that's it. Watch this video. So on your portal, you, you will see the video there. So we have information technology skills, communication skills, knowledge management skills, and the correct answer is knowledge management. Question two. The top three skills highlighted in the Humans Wanted report are mentoring, speaking, and comprehension, active listening, speaking, and critical thinking, critical thinking, mentoring, and time management. And the correct answer is active listening, speaking, 
and critical thinking. Question three. People need dash for moving from one job to another in the twenty first in the twenty first century. And we have transversal skills, life skills, communication skills. And the correct answer is transversal skills. This is because transversal skills are skills that form range, that ranges, and are not specific to a, a job, but they are common to many. So in other terms, you can say that they are the fundamental skills or the basic skills needed for someone to be able to acquire a job or to get a job in the 21st century. Question 4. Co competency development requires discussion with experts, reading from books written by experts, regular feedback from experts. So the correct answer here is regular feedback from experts. So that's the competency development. And the competency development requires practice and expect feedback. That's the reason why that's the correct uh, answer. Question number five, which is the last question. Lectures have limited capacity for skill development, true or false? And the correct answer is true. Lesson two or module two. Online learning and teaching methods. And we have five questions here. Most, most mode of delivery plays a crucial role in delivering the courses, true or false? And the correct answer is true. Question two. Technology enabled learning allows teachers to use a blend of technology in a learning continuum. And the correct answer is true. Because we have a range of choices. Question three. Usually, usually blended learning includes classroom teaching supported by a learning management system, LMS. And the answer is true. Question four. According to the law of equal substitution, Everything can be taught face to face as well as online, except in certain specific areas. And the correct answer for this question to this question is true. The last question in this particular lesson. Which of the following can be best taught online? Observing microbes under microscope, inserting glucose learning theories and concepts and the correct answer is learning theories and concepts lesson three implementing online learning and in lesson three we have six questions to answer and here are the solutions or the answers to the various questions which of the following can be attributed to experiences in Canadian post-secondary education sector. All institutions have e-learning strategy. E-learning is common. Blended learning is growing. And the correct answer is blended learning is growing. Question two. A good online learning strategy should have action needed at different levels in the institution. And the correct answer is true. Why? Because having a detailed strategy with responsibilities at different levels helps its implementation, thereby making it true. A learning management system, LMS, is very useful in designing an online course. True or false? Correct answer is true. Why? Because LMS makes it easier to organize lessons and assessment online efficiently. Question number four. Which of the following is the key in online course design? Teamwork to deliver the course, teacher expertise, availability of support. And the correct answer is teamwork to deliver the course because successful delivery of online learning requires team effort. Team effort. 
Question number five. For a developing country situation, while using video, which of the following should be considered in online learning? Bandwidth, technical support, learning management system. That's LMS. And the correct answer is bandwidth. Why? Because video requires mode transfer data or data transfer. So you need a bandwidth. Question number six is the last question in lesson three. Which of the following should be considered for instructor buy-in for digital learning? A, or the first one, instructor must be involved in planning and understanding the rationale. B, the availability of financial support to buy technology. And last one, a top-down approach to implementation of technology. And the correct answer is, instructor must be involved in planning and understanding the rationale. And this is the correct answer because teachers are key to the implementation of online learning. So their involvement in planning and understanding of the rationale is key to its success. Lesson four, understanding the learners. And in lesson four, we have six questions to answer. Question one, the lifelong learning market is growing due to which of the following? Changing job market, migration, availability of technology, and the correct answer is changing job market. This is because there is a need for diverse job rules and they require training and retraining. That's we unlearn to relearn. Question two. Online learners stay in chunks, true or false? It's true because of the availability of time in it. Question number three. Online learners need connection with instructors and self-disciple for independent learning. True or false? And the answer is true. Why? Because both self-discipline and interaction with teachers are crucial and essential. Question number four. The changing profile of learners demand that teaching and learning is available for free, anytime, anywhere, and for all subjects. And the correct answer is any time, anywhere. Why? Because time constraint of adult learners demands any time, anywhere learning. Question number five. LMS or VLE enables structured learning. True or false? True. Which of the following are important for students in an online course? Select all that apply. The select all that apply this condition simply means that we have more than one answer or one solution in this particular course. So we have availability, uh, sorry, flexibility as well as deadlines. We have manageable workloads and completing assignments. And in this, all the answers are correct. Feasibility is correct. Manageable is um, correct. Completing assignment is also correct. Therefore, there is the need for us to select all that apply. So we will select manageable workloads and um, the completing assignment as well. Lesson five and the theories of learning. In lesson five, you have five questions to answer. Question one. Learning theories provide framework for making judgment about the use of technology in teaching and learning. True or false? True, because this helps us to think about our practice and guide. Question two. Unknown truth can be scientifically discovered is associated with unknown truth can be scientifically discovered is associated is associated with objectivism connectivism cognitivism 
And the correct answer here is objectivism. Why? Because connectivism is about learning through and via networks in the digital world. That's why the correct answer is objectivism. That's the objective. Question three. According to constructivist, what kind of process is learning? Dynamic, static, or both? And the correct answer is dynamic because learning is a process. It does not end. It does not end. Question number four. Lecturing follows which of the given theories? Objectivist, connectivist, constructivist. And the correct answer is objectivist. Why? Because a tell and test is the normal approach in objectives. You tell and you test. Question number five, which is the last question. Collaborative learning online is a type of dash learning. Constructivist learning, connectivist learning, cognitivist learning, and the correct answer is constructivist learning. Constructivist learning because it facilitates knowledge generation through collaboration. Modo Six. Question one. Providing regular structure to daily weekly assignments is an important part of the structure in learner support. And the correct answer is true because students need to be guided towards accomplishing a particular task. Question number two. Instructor presence includes Providing regular feedback, guidance as needed by learners, facilitating discussion forum, and the correct answer is all. Oh. Because they are all key elements whenever an instructor is present. Then question number three. Setting up a notional workload per week, per course, covering all the online and offline study activities, help learners, true or false? And the answer is true, because it helps learners to sort, uh, learners to understand the time requirement to complete a program of study online. So the notional workload per week, per course, uh, is important. Question number four. Teacher workload can be managed by adding dash two an online course and the answers are more assignments, more facilitated discussion forums, more objective type questions and the correct answer is more objective type questions because online computer marked assessment um, helps manage workload of the teacher because it is easier to do the marking. Question number five. A critical class size of an online collaborative learning class should be about 40 to 60, less than 40, any number. And the correct answer is less than 40 because a small group can be managed by a teacher to provide support required during the collaborative learning activity. And here comes the end of the feet lesson, I'm oh, sorry, the sixth lesson, lesson seven, choosing media or selecting media. We can classify media by the symbol system they use and the answer is true because media consists of text, audio and images. Question number two, language learning can be best taught using text, video, audio. And the correct answer to this question is audio, because audio uses the voice uh, in a cost-effective manner. Because if you are, you are to use video, you will incur another cost in the production. Question number three. In the sections model, I is about interaction, inquiry, internet. And the correct answer is interaction. Question number four. 
According to the SAMR model, the use of technology to create previously unconvincible tax are covered in which stage? Redefinition, modification, augmentation, and the correct answer is redefinition because this will go beyond modification and augmentation to try new things to use technology. Lesson 8, Assessment Strategies. And this lesson consists of six test items. Question 1, using assessment questions as learning outcomes is a successful strategy used by many teachers, true or false, true. This is true because it helps to align objectives and assessment to foster outcome-based education. Question number two. It is challenging to keep a record of student activities in online learning. The answer is false because the LMS automatically keeps record of student activities online. So the records are automatically saved and kept for future use or like the manual one. Question number three. Online learning promotes continuous assessment, true or false? And the answer is true. Because assessment can be staggered throughout the learning um, period. You can take assessment at um, any time that you want. Example is in this particular course, at the end of each lesson, there is a formative assessment to test the level of our understanding. Question number four. Cheating in online learning is an obvious problem and can't be reduced. It's false, it can be reduced. Because cheating is a common problem in even both face-to-face -face and online. But there are ways to reduce cheating, which include the use of similarity detection software. Question number five. In his video, Dr. Tony Bates argues that Different credentials for both online and on-campus students. In his video, Dr. Tony Bates argues for same credential for both online and on-campus students. He argues for use of any approach to credentialing. And the correct answer is same credential for both online and on-campus students. Question number six, which is the last question. New forms of credentialing are typically, we have to select either one or more. And the correct answers, and all of these are all correct. So modular qualifications leading to full degree, bridge courses and batches, they are all correct. Lesson nine. This lesson is quality teaching in a digital age. And it contains four test items. Question number one. Employers are increasingly getting involved in external quality assurance of courses. True or false? It's true. Question number two. The demand to prove quality is higher in online learning than in face-to-face -face teaching. The correct answer is true because normally face-to-face -face teaching is taken for granted as quality. Meanwhile, there are some online courses which in its quality is good, especially the common rights of learning programs. You could see how tedious and how ethic it is for you to pass a particular course. Question number three. Quality standards for online learning is largely product-focused. Product the answer is false because online learning quality is more process-focused. Question number four. A quality online program demonstrates the following. So all these answers are correct. Systematic evaluation for continuous improvement, availability of adequate resources, then teacher trained in teaching methods, as well as online tools. Lesson number 10, trends in open learning. And this consists of five test items. Question number one. Open education in broad sense also includes public education system that is accessible to all. The answer is true because it makes education accessible to all, irrespective of where the person is. Question number two. 
Open education may also include you have to select either one or two. Any university, access to people with disability, the with disabilities, no formal qualification. And the correct answers are access to people with disabilities and no formal qualification. Question number three. Which of the following is not among the five characteristics of open in O G R? You have to select one redesign, reuse, remiss. And the correct answer is redesign. It's not among the five characteristics, which is the five hours. The five hours. Question number four. Open textbooks are usually peer reviewed and approved by local faculty to use by students. The answer, the correct answer is true because the faculty is normally responsible for adopting an open textbook. Question number five, which is the last question. Open pedagogy is an example of constructivist teaching, behavioristic teaching, connectivist teaching. And the correct answer is constructivist teaching because open pedagogy allows the learners to be produces knowledge and helps co-construction of knowledge resources. Lesson 11. Massive open online courses, MOOCs. And it involves five test items. Question number one. X MOOCs mainly follow DASH approach to teaching. Cognitivist, behavioristic, cognitivist, behavioristic, connectivist. And the correct answer is behavioristic because it follow the tell and test approach as we saw in the MOOCs in the previous slides. Question number two, CMOOCs are dash in nature, cognitivist, constructivist, and connectivist. And the correct answer here is connectivist because it creates learning environment for connecting people and resources. So that's the connectivist. Question number three, MOOCs are popular Due to, you can select more one or more, but in this case, all the answers are correct. Content from LH universities, scalability to a large number of learners, free or low cost. And as I said earlier, they are all correct answers. Question number four. MOOC, as a form of continuing education, is getting more recognition with micro-credentials. And the correct answer here is true or false, and the answer is true, because MOOCs are helping people to learn and upgrade their knowledge, their skills, and even attitudes with micro-credentials. Question number five, which is the last question. A big criticism of MOOC is poor quality assurance, low completion rate, good only for non-formal learning and the correct answer is the low completion rate and the correct example a correct example has to do with the col courses the courses found on the website of commonwealth of learning the completion rate is low that's why we have three types of the certification we normally give so they normally give the certificate of participation for even registering and enrolling yourself into the course and whenever you are done with the course, you have the certificate of completion. It means that you took part in the course, you were able to go through all the modules, all the lessons, and you have passed the final exams. So we have the certificate of completion and the certificate of participation. It says that it's correct. While a large number of people enroll in MOOCs, the completion rates are not encouraging. So lastly, Lesson 12, Emerging Technologies. And it also has five test items. Question number one, designing series games for online learning should include, and all the answers are correct, good user experience, 
a story with outcomes and gamification. Question number two. Primarily, seri serious games are useful to dash the younger learners, to motivate and encourage, to provide real world experience, and to solve problems of the younger learners. And the correct answer is to motivate and encourage. That's the use of game in our lessons. Whenever we integrate games into our lesson, it makes the learning, the teaching and learning process fun. And as such, it motivates and encourages and even boosts the morale of the learners. Question number three. AR or VR tools are useful for audio resources or video resources are two are tools which are useful for interacting with objects in virtual world or virtual world and undertaking dangerous and difficult tasks virtually providing fun learning experience and the correct answers are the first two in oh sorry all the answers are correct let, let me check well let me check well AR or VR tools are useful for audio resources or video resources. Tools are useful for interacting with objects in the virtual world, undertaking dangerous and difficult tasks virtually, and providing fun learning experience. And the correct answer to this particular question is interacting with objects in the virtual world and undertaking dangerous and difficult tasks virtually. Question number four. It is expected that the use of learning analytics and artificial intelligence in education will improve learning outcome. And the correct answer is true. Artificial intelligence is necessary. Question number five, which is the last question in the entire model and the last question in lesson 12. Artificial intelligence in education is used in, and you have to select one answer or more if it, if it deems fit. And all the answers here are correct. So, predicting student dropout. Artificial intelligence is used in teaching students, and it is also used in personalized learning. So, colleagues, here comes the end of the correct answers in the course TDA teaching in a digital age so these are all the correct answers and I do believe this video finds you fit so that you'll be able to pass and pass well you'll be able to accumulate, uh, accumulate enough CPD point so that at the end of our three year cycle We'll be able to renew our various teaching licenses. Thank you very much. This is YSV. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, and click on the notification bell because your comment is my life wire. YSV, death, NTC burden bearer.